anger, revenge, jealousy, anonymity, and repercussions. This is what happens when someone who gets too much internet confidence tries to take down others out of pure revenge. This is what happens when we break through the screen and the actions of ill intent are met with a sweeping hammer. This is the Destiny player that was sued for $7.6 million. Some footage in this video is from players around the community. Their links will be in the description of this video, as well as the music too. January 25th, 6.42 AM. Still cold outside. The crack of dawn begins, and an email is received. This is the email every content creator fears. The video in question, a Prophecy Dungeon song recreated from in-game files from the game Destiny. The channel Emblem gets a strike with an email representing Bungie under David Thompson CSC. This video was made by Emblem, Atlix Music, Promethean Archival Mind, and Breshi, channels dedicated to well-needed archiving of Destiny's music libraries, and the video had well over 300,000 views before being taken down. This was the first time they had ever been hit, but far from the last time the emails would ever be received. Bungie, just like any other studio, claims rights and has ownership for their licensed music. The gray line may be there as leniency in creative departments shifts back and forth with a Bungie community manager even clarifying further. The bottom line is that Bungie has the right to take down anything that falls under their copyright. I had the chance to talk to one of the music channels named Breshi, and Breshi claimed that although it's true, the music channels typically post music not found on the original soundtrack even showing a chart of that proof. The reality is that it just doesn't matter. On January 26th, Bungie uploads the Grass of Avarice soundtrack, and you'd think this was an open and shut case of Bungie wanting to post all of their soundtracks to the main channel. So far, the story lines up and doesn't have much to it. Bungie was recently bought out by Sony, and as someone who has received claims via Sony, even losing my old Twitter account to a meme that had music, I know they take these matters very seriously. A cold but calm day. Hey, uh, did you guys see this? I I've had this track on my channel for years. No. How many videos, Nazo? Only two, but one more and the channel is gone. I'm freaking out. Immediately after Emblem had their song taken down, Lord Nazo, another music channel, mentions he also had videos taken down from David Thompson representing Bungie. YouTube has already had an established history of claims for takedowns seemingly out of nowhere, but this seems like a pattern is emerging. The gray line may still exist, but it all but cracked with My Name is Bife. A massive lore channel that we have worked with in the past for Destiny-related content got hit hard by a copyright strike via David Thompson. Bife was quick to get in contact with the Bungie team for support, and by the next day, the video was restored. But there are repercussions that striking a video has. You take it off the internet, nobody is able to watch. Nobody's able to comment, like, etc. Something that every YouTuber would like to have is suddenly taken away. And when it gets restored, usually videos like that are all but dead in the water. It's why I ask you guys to sub, like, comment, etc. It really is the best way to support creators if you like their content and it pushes it further. Bife may have had a video that could have died, but his channel is big enough to make those views back. So what does something like this do to a much smaller channel? By the snap of a finger, it could be gone. Are you fucking serious? I don't know what to do. 
all those years, all those videos I posted. Gone! Oh my god! I'm done! This system is bullshit! Fuck this company! Fuck these people that cover the game! Fuck all of them! March 3rd. Leaves sprout. Spring is coming. But the air is still cold. Tension is the best way to describe the world. And tension is exactly where this day lands our story. March not only had one or two strikes via David Thompson, but this was the month that all of Destiny music on YouTube died. Lord Nazo had 10 copyright strikes on March 3rd and his whole channel was shut down. March 16th, Lord Canuck, another two strikes, ends up deleting everything on the channel out of fear of losing it. Promethean Archival Mind, probably Destiny's biggest music channel, is hit with a copyright strike via a new affiliate from Bungie named Jeremy Wyland CSC, and nukes everything on the channel out of fear of any more. Breshi ends up deleting 1300 plus videos out of fear that they are next from this email. Not only has Bungie taken measures to sunset the content in the game, but now the music that isn't available in the game anymore has no place to be found on YouTube. This was the day that music from the game Destiny died. Hey, did you get an email? Of course. That Thompson guy, right? No, no, this is from someone else. Someone named Jeremy Willand. Oh, so now those fucks are sending a whole army after us? What the hell did we do to piss them off? I don't know, man. But now apparently they're not even just hitting music. They're going after Destiny creators in general? What? Honestly, YouTube is becoming a shit show. Remove dislikes, crappy DMC tool that can easily be abused and used to impersonate creators, and now they're considering NFT integration? This may have been the time where all of Destiny's music died on YouTube, but it only turns for the weirdest and for the worst in the next few days, as a new CSC named Jeremy started striking creators too. Starting with Paul's Gaming Live, a smaller channel that really had no ability to fight back, Jeremy took down his videos for seemingly no reason. Some other small channels also hit this day would email Jeremy back, and unlike David Thompson, and to everyone's surprise, Jeremy responded. If you received a strike, you need to take it up with Bungie themselves. Clearly gonna be... Super versus super. So we're As to Cross Gaming, another massive Destiny channel was struck, but this time by Jeremy. It may be March 18th, but As to Cross and his channel were all but frozen at this time, and the video in question, just a bit of music and shots of the newest raid in Destiny. What was Bungie doing? Music is one thing, but music with game footage and commentary is another. This is breaching fair use and creative licensing at that point. David Thompson may have been within right to do this, but Jeremy Wyland was taking a power trip in a flawed system. Soon after this, another small YouTube channel named Aussie Halo was hit and had to completely shut down their YouTube and Google account as a result. And right after that, Esoteric, another massive Destiny channel, had strikes on videos containing cutscenes from the game. So now it's not just music, it's not just footage and commentary, it's also the cutscenes from the game too. This would result in Esso taking down a lot of videos. Life had been struck again, this time with an understandably frustrated response about how his video followed all of Bungie's rules, and how this went directly against what the TOS said for Bungie. It felt hypocritical, and like one giant power trip. I reached out to Bife for more clarification, and for this strike, it wasn't David Thompson. It was Jeremy Wyland. The very same day, Aztecross would receive a second strike pointing to it being a news video where all he showed were screenshots of Bungie's weekly news update, called the This Week at Bungie, or TWAB. Cross would upload a video that has since been deleted, talking about how he was afraid to upload YouTube videos for fear his channel would be shut down. 
creators were afraid, and more channels were getting bashed, and Bungie had online pitchforks pointed at them. Jeremy Wyland was mad with power, striking Bungie's own channels. Imagine being a CSC that was working for Bungie and striking your boss. You would have to be some form of crazy, right? Imagine and crazy are the right ways to describe this person, because as it turns out, this was not a CSC, but actually someone pretending to be one and striking channels all over. Soon after this announcement from Bungie, strikes get reversed for all channels associated with strikes via Jeremy Wyland. Keep in mind that this does not apply to strikes associated via David Thompson. You may be wondering then, what kind of person would strike a bunch of videos claiming to be a CSC? Who would have the motivation to do this? Well, the answer was in front of us the whole time. As it turns out, Lord Nazo was Jeremy Wyland, a made-up name for someone so filled with anger that they struck down their vengeance on everyone around them. Nazo effectively shut down all of Destiny's archived music and tried to crush every Destiny channel he probably watched with him. To make matters more ironic, Nazo's Twitter account, Discord, and YouTube account had many posts and messages all being a basic manifesto of how corrupt YouTube was for allowing his and other channels to be taken down so easily, and would constantly point to the little guy in the room not being able to fight back and save themselves. So was this a plot at revenge? Jealousy? The idea of power and not being caught? Or a bit of all of it? As in his own words, Many people don't seem to grasp that once a YouTube channel gets three copyright strikes, they're done for. And for Nazo, he's all but done for too. Bungie is currently suing Lord Nazo for up to $150,000 per takedown on their behalf, which could result in him paying $7.6 million on top of legal fees. Nazo is being sued by Bungie for $7.6 million in damages, citing both attorney fees and damage to Bungie's reputation. Given that for a time, everyone believed it to be Bungie on a DMCA spree against their own community. The rest of the legal document contains steps that were taken to unmask Nazo, like linking his YouTube and Reddit accounts to find his real life name together, along with the IP used to create those fake CSC email addresses. Now, to make matters worse, names and addresses he used also came up in a database of a cheat site from one of Bungie's previous lawsuits, implying he was also cheating within Destiny 2 itself. So not only was Nazo a part of a revenge plot out of anger, but he was cheating too. This is what happens when people think they will never see repercussions for their actions taken on the internet. And it's a sad reminder that internet friends, or however many great ones there are, have some bad apples too. You may not always be able to trust who's on the other side of that monitor. What Nazo did to Bungie and YouTube is awful, but I think for the friends that trusted him and heard him out, the friends that were lied to point blank about the whole situation, the people who were in his corner, they are rightfully feeling betrayed. While the consequences of Nazo's actions have had repercussions that have hurt some music channels, Bungie is working with them to restore libraries of documented music no longer available in the game. Bungie has called Google out and YouTube out for their poor copyright system, and this is one of the largest lawsuits in YouTube history. But unfortunately, this is a tragedy more than anything else. 